Imagine a hot day and you see a pond like this. It's natural for us to feel that we should take a dip in it, right? But did you know that can be a dangerous decision in many parts of the world? Because these freshwater ponds can harbor some dangerous organisms like brain-eating amoeba. But how does a very tiny amoeba, which is a protozoan, come to occupy an entire pond? It does so through reproduction. So in this video, we are going to discuss about reproduction in protozoans. In protozoa, only a single individual is enough to produce an offspring. So because you don't need two parents, you don't need gametes in order to produce a progeny. When the progeny grows up, they are often very identical to the parent that we can use the term clone to describe them. A clone is a morphologically and genetically identical organism. When I say morphologically, I mean the shape, structure, form, so the outer appearance of the organism and uh, genetically means the DNA that it possesses in the nucleus. Because the DNA comes from the single parent to the progeny, this is called as a uniparental inheritance. And more often than not, when you compare the DNA between the progeny and the parent, you can see that there are no genetic variations in them. This sort of a reproduction seen in protozoans is called as asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is not only seen in prokaryotes like RK and bacteria, but they are also seen in eukaryotic organisms which are single-celled. So we have protozoa, algae, slime mold and water mold and in multicellular organisms with very basic organization. So uh, hydra, sponges, uh, some fungi and even some plants like the strawberry. In plants, asexual reproduction is also called as vegetative propagation. Specifically in protozoans, the asexual reproduction occurs through a process called as fission. Fission is nothing but a single parental organism that divides to give two daughter cells. During the fission process, it starts with the division of the nucleus, which is called as karyokinesis and then it is followed by the division of cytoplasm called as the cytokinesis. Type of fission that occurs in these organisms depend on the environmental conditions. So if the environmental conditions are favorable for the growth of the progeny, then it would lead to binary fission. So here the single parent divides into two progeny. But if the conditions are unfavorable, it usually means that the organism cannot divide at will. So it would pass through an unfavorable condition and then at the end of it, it would divide by what is called as multiple fission. So a single parent divides to give multiple progeny. Binary fission can further be of two types, the longitudinal and the transverse binary fission. The differentiation is based on the axis of the cytokinesis, so in what direction the cytoplasm divides. Longitudinal binary fission is our focus topic today. This is seen in protozoans like euglena and trypanosoma. And here the body divides in a top-down or a longitudinal axis. So we will try to understand this process using a euglena. Euglena does not have a cell wall. Instead, it has a proteinaceous coat, which we call as the pellicle. At the anterior end of the organism, there is an opening called as the cytostome. So this is similar to our mouth. This leads to a sac-like structure called as reservoir. And the tube leading to the sac is called as the cytopharynx. The reservoir holds both the flagella of the organism, one long and one short, and they arise from their own basal granule or kinetosome. It has a single contractile vacuole, a stigma, a paraflagellar body, which is the photoreceptor which uh, controls how the flagella moves and overall how the organism moves. Then it has a nucleus. Uh, there are chromatophores around the nucleus. And finally, there are myonemes. These are the uh, locomotory proteins found just below the pellicle. We also observe the presence of paramylum, which are carbohydrate reservoirs within the euglena. 
During the process of uh, fission, the nucleus, the basal granule, the chromatophore and the cytoplasm undergo division. Initially, it starts with a nuclear division by mitosis so that both the daughter cells receive one nuclei each. This is followed by the division of kinetosomes, which are the basal granules, as well as the chromatophores. At first, a longitudinal groove develops in the middle of the anterior end. This groove extends gradually towards the posterior end until two daughter individuals are separated. The daughter euglenae resemble each other like mirror images. This type of longitudinal division is called as symmetrogenic division. Just because the daughter cells are produced from a single parent, it doesn't mean all the organelles go directly from the parent to the daughter. There are some organelles which both the daughter cells receive from the parent, for example, the nucleus. But few organelles go only to one daughter, but not the other. The other daughter cell has to create everything new. An example for this is the flagella. The parental basal granules and flagella go to only one of the daughter cells. But before they move to the daughter cell, the basal granules multiply. So the new set of basal granules go to one of the daughter cells from which they produce their new flagella. Finally, some of the organelles go to neither of the daughter cells. Example stigma, paraflagellar body and the contractile vacuole. These organelles break down during the process of cell division and they have to be created new in both the daughter cells.